Okay. No other questions about 10-4? Uh, because 10-4 leads into 10-5. Uh, this is the first part. So I want you to notice something on this one. So you have the intersection is on the circle. That's important. If the intersection is on the circle, then you just take half the arc. And my next question to you is this. Are you given the angle or are you given the measure of the arc? If you're given the measure of the arc, you take half of that and it gives you the angle. If you're given the angle, what do you do? You multiply it by two. All right, so let's talk about section uh, five. Right. Section five starts out with saying that very thing. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the first uh, theorem. It looks a little bit different, so I'll draw it on here for you. We have a tangent line and a chord or secant if the secant were to go through the straight period. Notice that the intersection is on the circle. Therefore, I know that angle one, if this is A and this is B, angle one, let's see over here for the major arc, angle one is equal to uh, half the measure of the minor arc AB. That's what you were, that's what you did in section four. Looks a little bit different because you have a tangent on the side. But the key is where do they intersect? They intersect on the circle. So get that right. Where's the intersection? What? On the circle. That's the first one. The second one. We have a circle, and the intersection of two chords is inside, it doesn't have to be in the center. In the center, that's different. Get central angles with the with it hitting the center. <coughs> Notice this is not exactly in the center. If they intersect inside the circle, here's how you do this. The measure of angle one is equal to, we'll call this um, uh, x degrees and y degrees here, just to make it simple. The measure of angle one is equal to one half. Here's the one half again. Notice we have one half all the time. One half of the oops, angle X and angle Y added together. Those two arcs are added together. But then you have to take half of it after you add the two arcs. Good so far? We'll do some examples here in a minute. And then the third one is if the point of intersection is outside the circle. And there's three cases for this, but they all mean the same thing, so I'll try, try to draw these on here. Case, uh, we'll just call this case one. I don't know what this, yeah, we'll just call this case one. We got a tangent, a tangent line and a secant. Then you have, uh, this is actually case three, I think, in your book. The two secants going through the circle, and then you have another one where you have uh, two tangents. Okay? How you figure these out is exactly the same way, okay? So we'll call this angle one, we'll call this x degrees and y degrees. So angle one, the measure of angle one is equal to one half, there it is, one half. Anybody have a question about whether or not you're gonna take half today? All right, one half. The bigger of the arcs minus the smaller of the two arcs. So again, let's, let's make sure we got this. If the point is on the circle, you just take half the arc. If the point is inside the circle, you add the two arcs and take half of them. If the point is on the outside, then you gotta take the bigger arc minus the smaller arc and then take half of that. That's the basis, basics of today. You ready me throw you some weird looking ones? Uh, I'll do some uh, even ones here. So here's a picture. Let's draw. Let's just do something simple. Make sure we got this. Here's a circle. Um, here's a tangent, and the arc here. Intersections on the circle. This angle is 117 degrees. I want to know what the measure of the major arc D, E, F is. 
So we have F, here's E, and here is B. So the question comes to you is, are you given the angle or are you given the arc measure? What were you given? The angle. So how big is the arc then? Twice that. Right? The arc is always twice the angle. The angle is always half the arc. So 234, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, let's draw another one. I'll draw a difficult one. Here we have FH again. Unless it says it's going through the center, do not say, do not assume it's going through the center. And this one here, this is E and G. This is 122.5 degrees. This is X, and this is 45 degrees. I want to know the value of x. All right, so the first thing you have to do, you're not trying to figure this out in your head, the first thing you have to do is, where is the intersection? Inside the circle. That's the first question you ask on every problem, so that you know what type of uh, equation you need to write. So here you're going to have to do some algebra on a lot of this assignment. By setting up what I just told you on those three different types of equations. Okay, so it's on the inside. We know that, that we have to take half of two angles added together. And that will give us one of these angles. Now, why are those two angles the same? They're vertical angles. Good. Well, let me ask you something. What is this angle? How do I figure out? Isn't this a straight line? How many degrees is a straight line? And so what is this angle right here? Fifty-seven point five. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I've got to do a little, uh, little work here. So this angle, which is what this answer is, isn't it? Fifty-seven point five is equal to one half these two angles added together, x plus 45. And then you would just do the algebra at this point. Okay? You can either distribute the 1 half, or why not just multiply by 2. And what do you get here? 115 degrees equals x plus 45. Now what do you do? Subtract the 45. And what do we get? 70 is what x equals. Oops, sorry. That's not, uh, that's what x is. To figure out the degree, you plug it back into the picture. It just so happens x is by itself, so it is 70 degrees. All right, so that was kind of difficult, right? No? Good, that's what I want to hear in other class. We did not figure it out. All right, well, let's try it again. Let's try something else. Um, let's see how good you are here. Uh, you guys act like you're smart. Prove it. <coughs> Point Q has two tangents to the circle. This is x degrees, and this is 247. I want to know what x is. What is x? First of all, what did I say you had to do first thing? What was the first question? Where is the intersection? So where is it? Outside. Outside. What's the formula? So this angle times the x is one half the bigger arc, 247, minus the smaller arc. I don't have the smaller arc. Do I? Why from 360? There's only two arcs on there, right? 
Well, you have one of them, so they both have to add up to 360. So you take 360 minus that, what do you get? 113. What? 113. 113. There's your two minor arcs, or I guess a major and minor there. Subtract them, take half of that, and you're going to get what x is. 67. Is that what everybody else got? Okay. So what is it the first thing you have to do? Yeah, you gotta you gotta identify the intersection point. And write down the formula kinda as you go. You don't have to write down exactly what I wrote. You can write down what they wrote in the book. They had all those letters and stuff. But to me it seems like uh, that you didn't need that. But uh, um, how do you do the problem? Write it down and then fill in what you have. Now, granted, you had to figure this part out, and on this other one, you had to figure another piece out. So, yeah, you're going to have to work a little bit at some of these, but the formulas are somewhat uh, easy. All right, that's it. Any, any questions? All right, I'll turn you loose. Here's your assignment. Uh, um, page 683. 3 to 18 all, 22 to 25 all. Um, quiz on Thursday. Thursday, everybody's, everybody's going to be gone.